Okay, so in the previous videos, managed to get a graphical environment working up and running. So the next thing to concentrate on is getting a graphical browser up and running. And that means that everything we'll be doing will be, well, it's, as, as we are at the moment, everything's self-contained. It's just, as you've seen, the text browser, while it's really useful because it is the only method we've got at the moment, really, to copy and paste stuff from um, the web browser, the text web browser, to the command line in the graphical environment. The text web browser is a little bit uh, awkward, um, certainly to read, um, and also a little bit in the way um, the copy and paste works. It's, uh, for example, carriage returns are copied over from the browser uh, when they're pasted, whereas in a graphical browser that's not the case. Um, and I'm, when I'm saying uh, carriage returns, I'm talking about wraparounds. Um, a wraparound in the browser, the text browser is copied if it wraps over one line. Um, the new line is copied, whereas a wraparound in, in the browser is um, magically held together as one single line. Um, so I imagine that's a function of the browser itself. So yes, as I said previously, the browser I'm going to aim to install is Falcon. Ultimately, ultimately there would be a load of dependencies for Falcon, but I can just about get it installed with some simple dependencies. So what I should do is to get logged in. In fact, I won't be in root, I'll be in kernel attacks. And run startx to boot the graphical environment. There's the windows that I configured and set up. That's all been retained. So that's good. So first of all, I'm going to go to the BLFS directory, find a links link. There's one there. Going straight to the book. And here I'll do the same thing. And that's sitting there now waiting to receive the packages that I download in the browser. So you can see already we've downloaded or installed quite a few packages. Um, if I do ls, anything that's beginning with tar, um, and then pipe that through, word count, so there's 87 packages there that have been installed by hand, and then probably another 50 or 60 or so that have been built automatically using a script um, for X windows mostly. So you can see we've done quite a bit of work already, um, but there's still many more to go, probably you know several hundred packages still to install. Right, so I'm just looking for the browsers. In my printout, I can't see what section they are. Okay, I'll take a look in this browser here. So, forward slash falcon with a K, there it is, there, and it looks like it's section 40. Oh, yes, the just scan past that. So Falcon 3.1.0. So I'm again going to look at it here and use this to track the dependencies. So we've got one requirement here already, extra CMake modules. So I'll get that up in a tab. I'm going to try and work on these one at a time to save too much confusion. Uh, so it's having too many tabs open. 
that requires CMake, which we've got, so this is going to be fairly easy to do. Um, let's have a look at the next one, Qt Web Engine. I imagine this is going to have lots of dependencies. Uh, again, there's a warning there about Qt Web Engine. Uh, similar to this warning here. Um, not going to worry too much about that, as this is more a learning experience. But as I've said previously, um, probably several times now, that if it's something that, uh, if this BLFS is something you want to keep, you might want to consider or reconsider what browsers you install. Okay, so there's something there about working around the fact that Ninja will try and use uh, the number of CPUs plus two. Um, and how to get around it. And it says, uh, please note that if you try to build Web Engine as part of Qt and the static library is not available, that's this static lib standard C library. That build will either complete without installing Web Engine or else fail during the install. Both variants were observed in 5.12.0. And as I predicted, this has got lots of dependencies. So we'll deal with that in a moment. Let's do extra CMake first of all. Extra CMake modules. Okay. So go into that, download the package, save it to disk. And there's the first of the installation notes there, so let's now extract uh, extra signal modules. Got a few set commands here. And a build directory needs to be created. There's no oh is there some explanations here? But there's nothing for us to be bothered with. So we can run this see make program and make so that looks like that's it uh, this qt5 core library yeah it's just requirement of see make Oh, required to run tests, okay. And it says it doesn't come with a test suite. So let's, oops. Let's run make install. And that's it, so it looks like they're just, I don't know. Well, it says they're modules, so I guess they're just little text modules. Let's tidy that up. Extra CMake modules. And that's in chapter 29. So that's actually part of KDE, interestingly. So that's crossed off completely. There's nothing more to do with that. <clears throat> so we've got that requirement, now we just need the Qt Web Engine requirement. Let's see what this needs. So it must have Node.js and it 
must have which. Now we've installed which. I'm pretty sure we did that previously. Yep. There's certainly the tarballs there. <coughs> so let's install Node.js then. Um, right, now we've actually got these uh, let's just check these I see a quick check I recognize them so I'm presuming yep got those but I don't I'm pretty sure we haven't got C R S it's certainly not highlighted let's have a look at that so what requirements that's got that just needs C make so we could get this installed and then once Node.js is installed it's complete we don't have to come back and revisit it because there's only this one packet the package to install so let's do that next see arrows so that's Qt web engine Node.js see arrows back again Qt web engine Node.js C arrows and that's it there isn't it? Let's double check that. Yes, that's right. So let's download the package. So is there any, no there's no explanations, yes it's quite simple here, so there's nothing extra to put in either. So let's build this. That's all built, so let's now install. Oops, sudo. And that's installed. 